This is Track Talk at the Big M. Hey, did you know that both trotters, that's right, both who've won under 152 in a race, were both trained by Ron Gerfein. Self possessed did it in the Hamiltonian record time two years ago, 151 and 3. And Beat the Wheel did it on July 8th, 94, out of the pocket with Cat Manzi, and went by none other than Pine Chip, 151 and 4. Those are the only two races trotters have gone under 152. And Mr. Ron Gerfein has had both. Do you remember those races pretty well there, Mr. Ron? I must, I must have had very fast race bikes in those days. Well, let's see. You self possessed a couple years ago in Hamiltonian, but beat the wheel. That was much more of a surprise, I would say. Well, beat the wheel showed up on a day when uh, the steam was coming out of the racetrack. They had a downpour at about 4 o'clock, and it was a 7 o'clock race. And Pine Chip had had, uh, I think, about a 30 day layoff. And uh, she just popped out of the pocket and beat him. I just, she lost a shoe in the first turn, too. But she was a very, very fast mare. I didn't think she had a whole lot of class, but she was a very, very fast mare. As a matter of fact, I bought a Donnerail filly out of her this year. Well, we've we seen you uh, all over the place with trotters. Experience Victory is racing tonight. He's a big ticket, uh, yielding 650000 a brother to self-possessed, we just mentioned. What's the story with Experience Victory, and how's he coming along? Well, the Colt's a very, very fast Colt. He's very, very anxious. He just uh, he wants to do it all at one time, which is very true of a lot of Valley Victories. Uh, I messed up his schedule a lot this year due to like weather in Lexington didn't help me and then uh, and then not qualifying him or putting him behind the gate with other horses earlier so uh, I really take a, a lot of the mess up for the blame myself because uh, things could have worked out better than they did but you know he came back he qualified under restraint a little bit better and uh, he certainly raced well last week so uh, we have restrained him probably more than I would like to restrain a horse that's you know, headed toward uh, classic races, but uh, I think maybe tonight we're going to take a shot and we're going to uh, see what he's like without the restraints. And it's 15 days from the Hamiltonian enough to find out if he's Hamiltonian, you know, material? There's not a whole lot I could do about it. I mean, <laughs> what I got is what I got, and that's it. i got to live with what I have. Well, you're the last trainer to win the Hamiltonian with a filly in Continental Victory in an unbelievable effort, 96, and there's some talk that Sirings Hanover might go win this year. What's your take on that? You know, Sirings Hanover is a very, very fast filly. She certainly impressed me last year at the end of the year. But uh, Sirings Hanover, Hanover hasn't been tough, tough tested by anybody. She, uh, you know, she's had everything her own way. They were really, whoever's second best is not really very good. You know, Pretzel Hanover disappointed me this year because she was very, very good in Lexington. And I thought there was a chance that she would come up and, 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 and test the other filly. But... So far, so far, uh, I think my Philly appeal to reasons come the closest to her, and uh, she's not a she's not a factor as far as that's concerned. So, would I like to see a race against the boys? Sure, because maybe I could win the Oaks with appeal to reason. Is uh, timing kind of important when it comes to something like this? Because back in '96, Conor Victory was outstanding, but Act of Grace in any other year might have been one of the top mares, you know, and she kind of got forgotten in there. Oh, absolutely! Just like we discussed before, Act of Grace was born in the wrong year. If uh, if Act of Grace was born probably in any other year, she would have been probably the second greatest filly that ever lived. Is the Hamiltonian pressure now year-round for, for you uh, when you get the, like the, the high-ticket item there at the yearling sale? Or, or how does that work? How much pressure is it to win Hamiltonian, especially think, when you've done it three times? I think I, you buy a $650,000 yearling, you automatically have high pressure. I mean, you're asking for it. Not that I really want it, but I mean, it's like I thought, I thought he was the best horse of his year. Uh, winning the Hamiltonian... Sure, I'd like to win the Hamiltonian. If he doesn't win the Hamiltonian, is it going to end my life? Are my kids going to starve? I don't think so. So I think what you do is you just you, you do the best you possibly can. And uh, he's a great horse. He's a very, very fast horse. Okay? And, uh, you know, if we don't see it this week or next week, someday we're going to see it. Okay, Ron Gerfine, you're not, you're not exactly an overnight sensation, so we're going to ask a quiz that involves your first Hamiltonian starter. That's right. Dinner for two on the line. Can you name the first horse that Ron Gerfine has started in the Hamiltonian? Remember, dinner for two on the line. We'll be back after this. I can cry over this one. <laughs> live interactive show here at the Meadowlands Racetrack. It's Track Talk live at the Big M. Let's give you the number again, 1-877-CN8 live, 1-877-CN8 live. And you can email us as well, Track Talk at NJSEA. People watching us from all across North America, the world, as a matter of fact, on the World Wide Web at TheBigM.com. Our special guest, of course, is trainer Ron Gerfine. Ron, you won the uh, Hamiltonian, of course, three times. Self-possessed, setting the stakes record. 
How did you get self-possessed, straightened around, after uh, he made a break in the uh, Budweiser Beacon course? I mean, you guys give me a lot of credit for a lot of things, but I mean, it really wasn't as hard as you make it out to be. I mean, the horse's feet were stinging him. His, you know, he had a splint pinching him and everything like that. And I changed his front shoes, and I did a little vet work on him, and uh, he was fine. Straightening this bird out that I got in tonight, that, that's, that's a, 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 a talented story. If I get this job done, then you can pat me on the back. But self-possessed, you know, he was almost ready. This, right. well, this, this one's a maverick. This, 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 this one needs a little bit more effort. But before we go any further, I have to say something. I had rain and snow in Lexington this week. We had just a brutal week, and it was very tough getting out of there. And I have to thank all my help in Lexington, and especially Steve Waller, who went the extra mile today and did everything to help me get out of there. So he trained like five horses with me and just did a wonderful job. So thank you, Mr. Waller. You are really appreciated. All right, and it's uh, we're glad uh, that you certainly uh, made it here, and we've got some calls, so let's go right to the phones here. Mike from Howell, New Jersey. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, Mr. Gerfine, I would like to know, would you race Sarenix Hanover and the Hamiltonian against the boys since you were successful with Continental Victory, if that was your decision? Would you race Sirenx Hanover against the boys? That was your if, if, if Sirenx Hanover was mine, would I race her against the boys? You know, it depends upon what you want in life. If she, if she was in my stable, I probably wouldn't because, you know, I just, I've never won the Oaks, and I have, I have a horse that I think is a better horse than, he, than, than she is. Uh, if, it, you know, judging from being in his stable, you know, he's never won either one of them. And, uh, you know, it's, it comes to the question, do you want to play it safe or you want to roll the dice? Uh, I'm a funny guy. I, you know, like, if, I, if, he really thinks, if he really thinks that he could beat us, then, you know, he's supposed to test the boys. But... Uh, I, I just, I, I don't, I don't it's, it's not too smart to me. All right. Well, uh, let's see what uh, Daryl thinks. Daryl from New York. Go ahead, Daryl. Mr. Gerfine, while I do understand that there's a lot of forces that uh, became overnight sensations, what do you think about Mr. Roman's feature about entering um, Anklin Hanover inside the uh, elimination? Because he's quite colorful. I guess you can agree to that. Well, can I say, the, the sport needs a whole lot more of Mr. Roman's, believe it. And uh, here's a man, if he can afford to do what he's doing, and he's having fun, and I've known him for, I don't even know him well, but I've known him from around the business for 25 or 30 years, then if this is what his pleasure is, God bless him and let him go, because we need more Mr. Romans in this business. Ron, in uh, 1996, when you won the Hamiltonian with Continental Victory, two things in that day got, kind of got lost. One, Mr. Vic was scratched, never raced again, and the other is that Moneymaker raced on that day. She was also three. And, of course, we know what she did later on, right. but Continental Victory, in supposing, what would she have done if she raced? Well, Moneymaker won the Oaks that day. Yes, won yeah. the Oaks. Right. What would Continental Victory have done, and what, what was the story of Mr. Vic? Well, Mr. Vic pulled a suspensory for a freak accident warming up, and I had the unenviable job of having to go to Mr. Siegel and telling him that the horse you just syndicated for $3.5 million is not going to ever race again. That was the great fun. Then we had a birthday party for Mr. Siegel after Continental Victory won, but he is the greatest man in the greatest sport, so, you know, it all, it all shook out and it all was good. Nice to see him win the uh, Metal Lands Base. Oh, it wonderful. Bizarre. Uh, nice to see him win anything. Absolutely. Anybody that puts that kind of effort and that kind of money into a sport deserves all the best. Let's keep the calls going, Ron. All yes, right, sir. shall yes, we? Sir. Okay, we've got Greg from Ocean, Ocean, New we Jersey. Go ahead, Greg. Hi, uh, Holly. Hi, Ken. Hi, uh, Ron. Uh, speaking of Act of Grace, she has a fall on tonight's program, Cold Balls, racing against your experienced victory. And something I remember from that year, uh, the night in 1994, um, with Beat the Wheel, when she went that world record, I think there were like four more world records on that same card, so that track was lightning fast that night. Um, in the case with experienced victory, in the case with experienced victory, was this a horse that you suggested to your owners to buy, and how much were you willing to pay for him? It's not, a, it's not a question of suggesting it. What I, what I do is I go through all the yearlings that are out there that have a pedigree that could get you to the Hamiltonian, and I rate them to myself. And he was by far the top rated. He, he was probably the top rated yearling that I've ever seen. And uh, I, just, uh, I just went out and I, I bought him. I mean, I wasn't going to go. I, believe me, I wasn't going to go 651. I was at wit's end. I told a few people before the sale that I thought he was going to bring 650, but uh, I really didn't expect it to happen, and uh, I really, I, I really am glad I bought him. I mean, the Colt is he's, probably, he's worth over a million bucks now. He's got a two-year-old record of 56. He's going to stand stud somewhere, 
So really, there's no pressure on the ownership now. In other words, the owners are out. In other words, they have, they have a stallion, okay? Whether he's worth $7 million or whether he's worth a million dollars, that's what's going to happen now. All but, right, so experience victory in action tonight. We'll uh, take a look and uh, uh, focus in on that expensive piece of horse flesh. But, uh, Ron, we also have some Budweiser Summer Blast concerts here in Paddock Park. Fun for the entire family, and it continues the series on Saturday night. Some cool jazz presented by CD 